Hi there, welcome back to the Dutch RC channel for another uh, information really video. Um, I picked up a couple of these uh, three axis uh, stabilizers from uh, Orange RX, uh, Hobby King really. Um, this is not a new product, obviously. They've been around for well uh, over a year, I think, the version 2 was released last year. Um, however, uh, this is a new version with new firmware on it, uh, 2.1 firmware. And the main difference uh, advertised by Hobby King is that this now can handle high-speed digital servos. If you have used these uh, three axis stabilizers before, uh, you might have noticed that uh, they do not work or do not work well with high-speed digital servos, which is, uh, well, I built most of my planes with uh, high-speed digital Metal Gear servos for precision and uh, speed. And uh, then you're out of luck because you can't use these, uh, the, at least the previous version of these stabilizers. Um, now, in this video I'll be going over the features and how to set it up. Um, I'll show you what all the pin connectors over here on the right do, what the switches bank. Uh, it's uh, of course very small, so I hope you'll be able to see them. But I'll talk you through them anyway. And the last thing over here at the top, you've got three potentiometers um, with which you can set the gain uh, of three of the three axes. Um, so, well, uh, the first thing I'd like to do is uh, show you how to connect a uh, stabilizer like this to your uh, receiver and to your servos and what the function of each of these channels, channels, well, pin pairs, what all these do. So uh, let me get a receiver and then I'll show you uh, how to connect everything. Hold on. Okay, this being uh, quite a small thing, it's a bit hard to show you. But as you can see, I have now a receiver connected to the stabilizer. And I have four um, of these um, female to female uh, servo wires connected to the stabilizer. Now you might wonder uh, what for? It's a 3x stabilizer. What do you need for? For? Uh, well, obviously, uh, aileron, elevator, and rudder, three. And one extra to be able to remotely switch the stabilizing on and off. Um, you could leave that out, uh, then it would be always be on. But as you can see, I've chosen to use that fourth channel uh, to be able to switch the uh, uh, stabilizing off from my remote. Now, uh, as you can see, I have used the bottom uh, four ports for that. Those are the inputs of the stabilizer and these wires you see here, female to female. Um, I think on the Hobby King they are uh, named incorrectly because they are female to female. I think they are named uh, male to male on the Hobby King side. But uh, once again they are, these aren't provided with the stabilizer so uh, you'd have to uh, get a bag of those yourself. And to be honest, as you can see, I've now used pretty short ones. Um, in most cases, it is more convenient to uh, use like five centimeter uh, long uh, wires for that. So you can uh, more easily place your receiver in your airplane. Um, obviously, you'd want the stabilizer to be flat be placed flat somewhere in uh, in the fuselage of your uh, airplane. Um, and, oh yeah, I didn't say that before, but this here, uh, the part with all the labels, is the front of your stabilizer. So this here should be 
facing forward. Now, on to the next uh, five, one, two, three, four. No, sorry, four sets of pins. The function of those is uh, the, the top one over here, the, these three, those are uh, your uh, ailerons. Um, it says AL, L, left. I'll explain more about that later on. Uh, the second one is your elevator. Uh, the third one is your rudder. And the fourth one is again aileron, uh, but with an R uh, behind it. Um, you might think um, that you could uh, use this stabilizer when you've got your um, aileron set up on separate channels. Uh, for instance, to be able to use them as flaps. However, that is a misconception. Um, and you might have noticed that there is only one aileron input over here on the, the, the last uh, few uh, pin pairs. So, there really isn't a way to uh, let the stabilizer know what your second aileron channel is doing anyway. So, what this second aileron uh, output channel over here does, it's only a reversed version of the first. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, I'm not sure, I've never come across a need for that, but uh, maybe you've got your servo set up thus that you would need a reversed second aileron channel. Um, that could be. And this way uh, you can set up uh, the one aileron on the first set of pins over here and the second one on the last set of output pins over here. Um, Otherwise, if you have both ailerons uh, moving the same direction, or well, uh, in um, like in most planes, really, you could just uh, Y uh, split the first output to your uh, aileron servos. Um, okay, so much for all the pins. Um, if you have any questions, if I'm not clear in any way. Uh, please hit me up a comment down below and I'll try to explain it then. Um, okay, the next thing. Um, I'll also uh, show you if, in fact, this new stabilizer uh, works with uh, high-speed digital servos. I'll come that to that in a, in a minute. Hmm. It doesn't want to lay flat on my table anymore. Okay, okay. Uh, the next thing I'll explain to you is this bank of little dip switches. Um, let's see. Yeah, the, the first one is an aux control uh, channel or switch. And that is used to uh, enable or disable the remote... Um, on and off switch for your stabilizer. So, uh, like I did uh, with the fourth input, uh, if you slide that first little dip switch to the left, click, then uh, the remote control for your stabilizing functions is on. So, uh, in my case, I need to switch that to the left. And let's see, uh, yeah, uh, the, the next three switches are all um, uh, reversers. For, so for your rudder, elevator and aileron, you've got a reverser switch. Now, um, it is important to uh, note in that, um, that uh, if you are building your model and you're setting up your radio, um, well, you, you, you watch your model and uh, see if you need to reverse channels, right? Um, however, with a stabilizer like this, you first need to have a look if the stabilizer corrects things the right way. Um, you can't do that after you've done the reversing in your radio. Well, you, you could, but it wouldn't work. <laughs> uh, you f 
once again, you first need to have the stabilizer work correctly. So, um, well, you just put the stabilizer in your model and uh, move it around like this for your Elon uh, check or in this angle to uh, check your elevator and uh, turn it around a little to check if your rudder uh, turns the right way and um, if it doesn't uh, you can uh, switch one of these three switches to have that work correctly. Now um, it can be a bit hard to see um, if, if it runs correctly and I'll actually show that. I will hook up a servo to um, what channel, it doesn't really matter, I'll use the aileron channel. There we go, we've got, is the servo in view? No, now it is. Okay, and I will put a, uh, a connect a LiPo to the ESC I have connected to it. There you go. Things light up. Okay, let's check if my Aileron servo works. Yes, it does, and it actually walks out of frame. Thank you. Now, um, if I move the stabilizer like this, I think you can see that my servo also moves, which is what I want. And if I now flick a switch on my transmitter, click. There. Now the servo doesn't move anymore. So uh, I've now, sorry, oops, sorry, I've now effectively um, disabled the stabilizer. Okay, I've switched it back on. Now I'll move the, the stabilizer around a bit and as you can see the servo only makes tiny movements, right? And you will find that it is then hard to judge if the stabilizer does the stabilizing the right way around. But you can solve that by using these three dials to um, uh, enlarge the, the, the way the stabilizer uh, tries to stabilize. You will see that if you turn one of these three uh, clockwise to, uh, for instance, um, two o'clock. They're at now at around 12 o'clock, I think. Yes, 12 o'clock. So if you uh, turn, uh, for instance, uh, let's see, the roll, the last one, the right one of these uh, potentiometers uh, clockwise to about uh, two o'clock, you will see that your uh, deflection caused by the stabilizer, this movement, uh, will be a lot bigger. And uh, then you can more easily judge if the uh, stabilizing, uh, the stabilizer effects uh, is the right way around. Okay, I'll get uh, back to the, these three potentiometers in a, in a bit. Uh, let me first tell you what the last two switches are for and how they are used. The last uh, one of the dip switches is used for delta planes, so uh, flying wings. And if you switch that to the left, the stabilizer will think that your plane is a, <laughs> is a uh, delta wing plane. Um, in that, uh, if you have switched it to the left, then you can uh, use uh, the aileron and elevator channel for your both uh, for both your um, uh, aileron elevators, right? Um, you you'd of course have to see after that if the stabilizing mode runs the right way, and if it doesn't, you will have to uh, invert one of those channels. Um, and the one above that is for V-tails. Um, if you're not familiar with those, um, uh, that's really a combination of a rudder and elevator. And so if you have a tail set up like that, you will switch that switch to the left 
and then you will use uh, for your both V-tail uh, surfaces the elevator and rudder outputs. And once again, <coughs> if it doesn't uh, move the right way, you can alter that with these switches. And um, oh, uh, <laughs> uh, you can of already see that uh, this new uh, stabilizer indeed works with uh, high-speed digital servos because this is such a servo. Um, I'm a bit uh, surprised really that uh, only a uh, firmware, firmware update uh, solved that problem. But uh, well, again, I'm, I'm happy that it did. So I can now use the stabilizer for other planes. Um, okay, and the last thing you can configure, uh, as mentioned before, are these three uh, potentiometers. Um, you can, uh, out of the factory they come at around 12 o'clock and that is a reasonable uh, baseline. Oops, sorry. Out of the factory they come at uh, set at the, around 12 o'clock. So uh, running uh, from top to bottom. And if you want to increase the amount this stabilizer stabilizes or the deflection it uh, makes to stabilize your plane, uh, you will turn them clockwise. And not a lot. Um, you will find that uh, uh, like a one o'clock, a setting of one o'clock is quite a bit more than uh, 12 o'clock. But uh, I'd, I'd advise you to just uh, take small increments and see how that works out for your plane. Um, in most cases, uh, the faster the plane is, the less amount of uh, stabilizing you would want. Um, I'm sure you could uh, imagine that uh, if this stabilizer makes the deflections big and your plane is uh, fast, uh, it, it'll tend to overcorrect things. So you'd, uh, for instance, if you have uh, the, the pitch set up too high, um, you, your plane would uh, dive and the stabilizer would see that. Try, will, it'll try to uh, raise the nose, but too much. And then, then it'll see, oh, the, the nose is up too far. So it'll stabilize it down again. And uh, that'll be an endless story, really, at high speed. So um, if you have a, a, a like an EDF jet that's uh, quite fast, you tr uh, first try this stabilizer at uh, around the 11 o'clock setting. So you would turn all these dials uh, counterclockwise. Um, well, that's it really. Uh, my uh, biggest uh, concern, or concern, uh, the, the reason I uh, got this new version was to see if it really does work with uh, high-speed digital servos. And it seems to do, so uh, great. Um, I hope you got some information out of this tutorial. And once again, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, please hit me up a comment down below and I'll be happy to help you. Bye bye.